Now, in this video, I'd like to talk about heaven. There's a lot of talk about heaven in the churches, etc. Well, they've got it all wrong. Heaven is here. They haven't noticed it. There's a lot of people who haven't noticed that they're living in heaven. I've always noticed it. I mean, it's the most beautiful place imaginable, the earth. I mean, you can't get any better than that. What do you expect? I mean, uh, what is wrong with the earth that it uh, disappoints you? Are you uh, deluded by everything? I mean, uh, are you disappointed in what God has given you here on the earth? I mean, you have everything. I mean, anything you don't have is your own fault. I mean, your overpopulation, if you are a thousand times more people than you should be, then that's your fault. I mean, and you are a thousand times more people than you should be. And uh, if you have negative emotions, it's your fault because you uh, rebelled against the gods and against all of nature and consequently you are possessed by negative emotions. You actually do it to yourself according to me and according to my uh, friends because um, uh, it's a kind of way of torturing yourselves which to distract yourselves from the notion of the real suffering that awaits you at the end of your lives the eternal suffering inside and you don't want to know about that so you make yourself sort of suffer in your lives if you had too much pleasure in your lives if you had pleasurable feelings all day every day then you would be suddenly getting a bit suspicious and uh, you would then start remembering things and then all of a sudden you would realise that at the end of your lives there's an eternal suffering waiting for you. But of course that's a sincere of mine, that's, uh, that you actually do it yourselves. But of course you do inflict headaches on yourselves and toothaches on yourselves and all that. I mean, that is perfectly pointless having a toothache for more than uh, one day. You don't need it, because uh, one day and then you go and see the dentist and, uh, and the dentist informs you what's wrong. Whatever pain you have shouldn't last for long at all. Uh, if you can't actually deal with the problem, then you simply ignore it. And ignoring it means feeling no pain at all. Your nerves aren't supposed to transmit your pain when it's not necessary. Instead, you've programmed your bodies to transmit, to transmit as much pain to you as possible. Of course, this is uh, how you behave, so that's why your effectively your heaven prize here isn't so nice as it should be. Uh, Effectively, with six billion people on the earth, you can't have such a good time as if as if you were in six million, which is the limit by law of nature for the number of human beings permitted. Six million human beings have a great time, and they do great projects and everything, and. Uh, of course, the other thing is that you're fighting against your own bodies because the matter in your bodies is uh, silently insulting you because uh, it is not uh, agreeing with you because you're against nature. So if your own bodies are against you, then you're fighting to, uh, to survive in them. And... Uh, your bodies decay very early and uh, you continue to live uh, beyond the points in which you should die 
and uh, you go on to total decrepitude. I don't know what the right word is, but uh, you go on to being totally decrepit. And this causes a lot of sadness in your society because you spend years and years and years looking after relatives who are sick all the time and suffering all the time and you're sad about it and everything because they're going to die soon, you know, and all this. And, uh, uh, whereas in the catatonic society, which is the legal human society, a person is terminated by a member of the group. Because I'm referring simply to the beginnings, where things are kept very simple. Alright, so uh, there is a member of the group who has the strongest right arm, who will terminate the people who have reached the point where they have to die with a blow in the chest. Then of course when society evolves, they have uh, scientists there and everything in a room in a special hotel and they terminate a priest who has studied the things thoroughly. And of course everything is backed up by the gods in the beginning because the gods haven't been chased away as here, as happens here. So uh, in the beginning, uh, any kind of uh, problems are resolved by the gods. So, uh, well, if you go right to the very beginning, anyone who breaks their leg will have it cured by the gods, and uh, so on. But. Uh, they have a race to get uh, the motor car ready. Once they have the motor car ready, then they can soon have everything else ready in a flash. Within 50 or 60 years, they have the most uh, brilliant hospitals ready and everything, and they have the most brilliant, uh, uh, brilliant things, really. And uh, once they've done that, they go into, they, once they've evolved their technology to a certain level, they have their communications well established and everything, then they uh, are allowed to indulge in the arts, because they're not allowed to indulge in the arts before, because uh, there's no time to do it. They have to develop their infrastructure, their their technology and everything and their basic needs before they actually go on to indulging in the arts. And all houses have to be very modest at the beginning. And uh, no houses that are impressive are constructed until the actual cities called the eternal cities are built, which have to be extremely impressive. And then, of course, the governors can live in luxury palaces and everything like that. But uh, up until then, they live in fairly modest houses that are just slightly larger than other people's houses. There are no empires or anything like that. Empires that are then uh, defeated and wars and massacres and uh, slaughters and all that. Nothing like that happens on uh, catatonic globes. That is the globes where the human beings have followed nature and have not dismissed their gods. So, uh, really it's all your fault that uh, it doesn't seem like heaven here to you, because to me it seems like heaven, it always has been. I mean, I've gone for long bicycle rides by myself. I found the countryside so gorgeous and so beautiful, and uh, everything has seemed so beautiful to me. And uh, when I came to live in Italy, everything seemed so beautiful to me, because it's a extraordinarily beautiful place that to uh, none... Uh, let's say, a, a person who hasn't yet been educated to realise that it's the most evil place of all. Well, this Italy has architecture that is extraordinarily evil. And, 
I don't like it at all anymore, the old architecture, ancient architecture of Italy in the city centres. But I uh, can look at it and uh, I can realise why it kind of besotted me and it uh, did. And I, uh, I lived the Stockholm Syndrome stuff, you know, the being in love with Italy stuff and uh, all the joy of the light, nightlife and everything and uh, it was such a heavenly place for me. And it still is a heavenly place, it's actually it's got more heavenly since I've been stuck in psychiatric institutes. It's got more heavenly for me ever since then. I have been uh, feeling better and better and better and better year by year. And uh, there's only just been sort of like three months where I felt awful about six years ago. And uh, the rest of it has been uh, quite heavenly, I must tell you. And uh, there are moments, yes, one hundredth of... Uh, Every day has to be slightly annoying. If you don't have that slight annoyance, that tinge of pain in your life, then you don't appreciate the rest, you see. If you never feel any pain at all, you will not appreciate the ecstasy. And it's such an ecstatic place to live in. I mean, uh, where I live is an institute where you have uh, nurses, educators, all sorts of things, all sorts of interesting people and uh, we have food, it's not sort of luxury food but we have food and we have uh, uh, sort of food juices and we have, uh, well we have all sorts of things and then of course I have my uh, computer and uh, that's the uh, most marvellous thing and uh, I just cannot imagine how anybody who has a sort of a house of their own and a car of their own that is sort of new, because I have had cars, once I used to have cars, but they all were about 12 years old when I bought them and they, I bought them for practically nothing. You know, and they were falling into bits, really, my cars, and I used to find friendly people who would uh, adjust my car for me, a friendly mechanic who would uh, adjust my car for me for a low price because I constantly needed changing parts. So uh, I, uh, I have had a very, very good life a few after now. And I am, uh, as I said, looking forward to uh, being able to read the newspapers again and read and watch television again because it's more than 10 years that I haven't watched, news watched television or read the newspapers because it's so boring. They're just, uh, just, just so, so full of such a lot of rubbish, just, just such boring lies and boring rubbish that it is just, uh, it's not worth watching the television or even the newspapers. But I predict that towards the year 2020, the newspapers and the television are going to get very interesting to watch and to read. Because uh, the most appalling things are going to be going on uh, on the earth. So I'm just going to enjoy that from my spectator's point of view, sitting in my institute, whatever institute it is. Because, you know, once you get become institutionalised, you then never become de-institutionalised, you remain institutionalised. And you can never get out of that. But that works in my favour because I'm always sort of guaranteed food. And that is all, and a bed to sleep in, and that is uh, what I'm guaranteed. Whereas the other people will find that when they reach a population of 15 billion, 
there won't be houses for them because uh, you don't have the resources to build houses for 15 billion people and you don't have the resources to feed 15 billion people so there will be dead bodies littering the streets so uh, all this will be very interesting and there will be a sort of a third world war waging on with uh, sort of massacres generally all over the planet and uh, it will go on for 50, 60, maybe it was, well I don't think more than 60 years, 50 or 60 years it will go on and uh, it will do it completely, uh, it will, so many people will be killed during this war that uh, it will be um, rather uh, interesting to uh, read about it and watch about it on television. It will be uh, distracting because uh, in this last half a day, half a century, in the last 50, 60 years, most of what you've been doing is torturing the animals or innocent beings and are on the good side. And they are wanted by nature and they're all very happy left alone in the forests and the jungles. All the animals are very happy. They all think that they're living in heaven and they are living in heaven, that's their heaven. And uh, they don't like their heaven being ruined by you people. So once I see, start seeing you people ruining their heaven, I get boiling with fury, you see. And I spent many years boiling with fury, but I sort of simmered down a bit. And I look at things from a slightly sarcastic point of view, you see, because it's you people who are going to be massively and slaughtering each other soon, because uh, once starvation sets in, that's what happens, you see. And uh, you are reaching the point where you won't be able to feed yourselves in the West, you see, because uh, you claim to have a civilization while you have a billion people starving in Africa. Well, that's a load of rubbish. How can it possibly be a civilization? If uh, you have, actually you have uh, more than that, because you have the entire, an entire block of countries, not only Africa, that are living on the edge of starvation. So, uh, you're not civilised at all. That isn't a civilised way to behave. If everything that you are buying in the shops is based on slave labour, it comes from slave labour, you know. You can't buy anything at all if, that is not made by slave labour unless you buy ultra luxury products of course uh, then probably they're not made by slave labour but uh, everything else is made by slave labour and uh, often it's just little children who are working as slaves and uh, uh, in any way it's always slave labour and uh, there is no way of finding a way to buy things that are not made by slave labour because if it says it isn't bought, isn't made with slave labour, it's lying. I mean, there are special shops called fair trade shops, but what what is fair trade? Well, I bet it's a big lie. All this, you know, because I mean, this fair trade. How much will they be paid? I mean, is sort of. Uh, 20 cents an hour a reasonable salary, I don't think it is. I mean, so, as you can't trust anything that is written anywhere on this planet, you can't trust anything that is written on any confection or any food or anything. So, or any, any object that you buy, you can't trust anything that is written there's bound to be a lie somewhere. You see, there is always a lie unless it's something that you can find out easily. I mean, it's obviously if you buy uh, 
computer with a 22 inch screen, you can measure that screen. So it says 22 inches, it doesn't lie because you can simply get out a tape measure and measure it. So uh, it can't lie to you and say that it's a 22 inch screen and say it's an 18 inch screen because you notice a difference and uh, you would measure it, you see. But if you can't find out for yourself whether it's a lie or not, then it's a lie. That's how it works on this planet. It's always a lie if you can't find out whether it's a lie or not. So, uh, that's uh, the problem. You have created a society that is based on total lies and lots of levels of lies. It's incredibly complicated. And this doesn't make life very comfortable. Well, I've tried it myself lying, you know. I got into a lie situation myself when I was young, very young. I uh, had told a lie, you see, and about myself. And I had to maintain this kind of situation, this uh, image of myself uh, to other people. And I eventually gave up and admitted the truth because uh, 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 it was just so stressful to be lying about myself when uh, uh, all I had to do is just sort of uh, go red in the face and admit that I'd been lying about it, you know. And uh, all I had to do is have a little embarrassment over about an hour. And I got out of it and I felt so relieved, so relieved. He said, you people insist on going on through your whole lives, living lies. And it's absolutely ridiculous. So this, this fact that you don't believe that you're living in heaven is uh, to do with all this. It's to do with this behaviour here. And I assure you that you are living in heaven. You see, you are insulting the gods, everything. You're insulting the ultimate entity, everything. I mean, the whole structure of nature was designed so that for human beings it would be heaven. If it isn't heaven for you, then it's because you have ruined everything yourselves for yourselves. And you've also ruined it for a lot of other creatures on this planet, I'll tell you. Well, that's all I say for today.